welcome to another drawing video with me, Mrs. Shano. Today, I want to draw what looks like just abstract art. Abstract art being art that doesn't represent anything in the real world. Just line, shape, color, all of that good jazz, movement, unity, just elements of art, principles of design, put together in a beautiful blobby or geometric composition. But this is not abstract art. Believe it or not, what I created here on Clicky is an illustration of a teeny, tiny creature called an amoeba. I was talking to a teacher and she was telling me how her students were learning all about living things and non-living things. And in those living things the students were studying, they were even learning about the tiniest, tiniest living things, the tiniest cells that make up all of life on Earth. And it made me think about these little tiny creatures called amoebas. Amoebas are so tiny, you can only see them under a microscope, which if you're not sure what a microscope is, it's a tool that scientists use, kind of like a telescope, but uh, it has a lens that magnifies what you're looking at, hundreds, sometimes thousands of times larger than its true size. Now, if you don't know what an amoeba is, an amoeba is a one-celled creature. Now pause that. Do you know how many cells make up the human body? 100 trillion cells make up your body. So this little guy is the, <laughs> it's just indescribably tiny. We have 100 trillion cells and he only has one cell or she. Well, technically it's not a he or she. It's a very tiny single-celled creature that is among the simplest of all living organisms or living things. Most amoebas are so small they can only be seen through that microscope and they look like tiny blobs of colorless jelly. Amoebas can be found in fresh and salt water and they can also live in the moist body parts of other animals and in moist soil, but they don't hurt the animals, I promise at least most of the time. Um, at least six types of amoebas are found even in human beings. But don't worry, any amoeba hanging out in your body is not going to hurt you and you'll never see it. Um, the cool thing about amoebas is they move by changing their shape. They don't have arms and legs like we do. They have one cell, whereas we have 100 trillion. First, an amoeba extends part of its jelly-like body outward, like a stubby little finger moving out of a closed fist. This projection is called a pseudopod, or a false foot. And the amoeba then slowly pours the main part of its body out into its fake limb, or foot, which makes it go big, grow bigger and bigger. So let me show you what an amoeba looks like moving under a microscope. We've talked a bit in art about geometric shapes, shapes we know in math, squares, triangles, ovals, hearts. We've also talked about organic shapes, shapes we find in nature, shapes that can't, don't exactly have a name. They, they might be blibbity blobs or zigzags or all sorts of fun shapes. Um, and an amoeba is most certainly an organic shape. We know it's a living thing because uh, it grows and changes. Look at it moving. We know it's a living thing because it needs water. It does eat, and I'll show you in a video <laughs> it eating. Um, so it, it needs to eat, it needs water, um, and it grows and changes. That's how we know that it is a living thing. Now look at these pseudopods moving out, and this is called a uh, paramecium. This paramecium is another single-celled organism that is getting trapped by this amoeba right now. He's going to be lunch. Sorry, paramecium, you're doomed. Okay, that all being said, now that we know what an amoeba is, what it looks like, and how they change shape constantly in these organic forms, let's make our own amoeba art on either clicky.com or with good old paper and pencil or some paint. So, Grab your art supplies, let's begin. When we make our drawing, we really want to focus on line, shape, color, uh, and then as far as principles of design, we want a feeling of movement with our fun little uh, organic moving shapes of our 
of our um, amoebas. And we want to bring emphasis to our amoebas with size uh, and proportion here. So when I say I want to bring emphasis to them, I want, when someone looks at your page, to look right at your amoebas and not anywhere else. We're going to make them the biggest thing on your page. So let's start with that line. Alrighty, so I'm going to grab my black pencil on clicky, and I'm going to start with organic shapes. Don't overthink it, guys. Amoebas can have all sorts of curves and turns. You're just not going to see a lot of straight lines on that amoeba. Maybe there's one amoeba. Let's try another one. Maybe he's going to have one of those long pseudopods, which is him kind of sticking on an arm or a leg. Like when this guy was trapping the paramecium trying to eat uh, his lunch. There's another idea. Oh, I kind of like that one. I don't want to erase you, but I'm going to give you another idea. Let's try another one. See, look, it, there's no, oh, too, too pointy. There's not really a right or wrong way to make your organic shape for your amoeba. Look at that. The one rule is, if it's a shape, it has to be what we call enclosed, meaning those lines connect and there's that empty space inside your shape. So I, there's one amoeba. I want to put another amoeba or part of amoeba as if I'm looking under a microscope and there's a few of these guys floating about looking for a snack. Remember, they like to live usually in moist places, which means wet places. Uh, fresh and salt water are happy homes for amoebas. Usually they love to eat something called algae. Algae is a very tiny plant organism. Maybe I'll draw a little blobby here. That's that paramecium creature that was getting eaten. Maybe I'll put another little organic shape of an amoeba kind of floating off the page here. And maybe I'll put another little pseudopod limb over there. If you think amoebas are awesome and you're just fascinated by the worlds inside our world, the teeny tiny things that make up our planet, go ahead on Mayan or Achieve and look up some articles. Science and our world have some truly amazing uh, things to learn about. Now, in our amoeba here, you see all these tiny little circular shapes. There are things inside a cell. Even though the cell is this teeny, tiny, indescribably small thing, there are parts within that part. Like uh, the, the cell has a part called a nucleus, which is kind of like... Um, I don't want to call it a brain, but it's kind of like the base of the cell. I'm not the best with science, so don't take my word for it, but it's so cool to learn about these things. So I'm, I'm going to put what I know every cell has. Every um, amoeba would have a nucleus. And then there were all these other little circular shapes. Now in real life, amoebas don't have a color. They're colorless, but because they're clear and colorless, they kind of would reflect any light or color around them, um, just like water does. Like the ocean's not really blue, it's reflecting the sky or showing some of the, um, you know, the algae color reflecting if it's a greenish kind of ocean. Algae being plant life, it's usually a little greenish. I bet you've all seen a, a green blue sky, uh, sea before or ocean. So I'm just putting some fun, smaller, circular shapes within my amoeba. It gives a good variety of size and shape. We've got these large amoeba organic shapes bringing emphasis to our page. And then we've got the fun variety of all these little blibbity blobby circular shapes within that cell. Maybe these are parts of a, of a, a, a little bit of lunch he had or something. I don't know. I'd have to do more research on amoebas. All I truly know about them is what I shared with you. Grown-ups are always learning, too, guys. I might do some reading about amoebas later. When I was telling my mom this morning that I was going to make a drawing video about amoebas, my mom loves science. She went on and on about the different kinds of amoebas, and she was talking about how there's a kind of amoeba that can eat your brain. But don't be afraid of that. <laughs> it's incredibly rare that you'd get a brain-eating amoeba in your body. Alrighty, I think I'm happy with all of my shapes. This is a very easy, fun drawing, guys. We're kind of loosening up. Like I said, even though we're drawing something from real life, this is more like abstract art. You would only know that these are cells, these are amoebas, because we talked about it. If I just saw this kind of art, I'd say, oh, abstract art, line, shape, and color. It's not representing anything in real life, but we know better. 
This is an illustration of amoebas. Now, you saw my first drawing. I picked lots of cool colors, blues and purples. Greens are also a cool color. You could pick warm colors, red, oranges, and yellows. You could put all the colors of the rainbow because we're imagining that these amoebas are on a little petri dish, which is a little piece of glass, and they're reflecting any light you can imagine. So have fun with this. I'm going to start by putting a deeper, darker color in my background, maybe a bluish purple. I just love cool colors. It's my thing. Uh, but if you're a warm color person, go for it. I'm also going to layer on, just for some fun, again, variation, a variety of color, I'm going to pick some other blues and greens to layer on. I'm going to use my fuzzy brush, my blending brush. If you're using crayons, it should be easy to layer different colors of crayons. And I'm going to put different colors kind of around the amoebas in a soft kind of glowy feeling because I, I, I still want the emphasis to be on my amoebas. So I don't want hard lines of color around my amoebas because I want my viewer to look at the amoebas, not the color around them. This is still empty space back here. I don't want too much going on. Let me pick a fun tealy green. Whee! Put some fun colors. I might put a little pink too, which is technically a warm color, but it'll look nice with those blues and purples. Alrighty, pink time or magenta. Yeah, we'll move toward magenta. Magenta is a color that's somewhere between pink and purple. And it just kind of blends as a purple on here because I have the opacity, which is how see through a color is. Uh, or not see through, I should say. Opaque means you can't see through it at all. I have the opacity way down. So this pink is kind of see through and not showing up all the way, which is good for blending. All right, so there's some color in my background. And it's always good to work background to foreground, which is back to front. What's furthest away to what's closest. It just uh, makes your coloring much easier. Uh, let's see. I think in my drawing today, instead of blue, I'm going to pick some funky, fun, minty greens. So for my amoebas, I'm going to pick a few different values of green. Value is darkest dark to lightest light and all that's in between. So I'm going to imagine maybe they're reflecting light a little differently. Not all of them will be the same intensity of color. Let's see. Little paramecium getting eat for lunch. I'm going to make you that color. Now for all these little cell parts, I'm going to pick some fun warm colors. Oranges, yellows, reds. I'm picking warm colors for some contrast. Contrast is when things are very different from each other, whether it's dark and light, or as far as other colors, um, color opposites like warm and cool, or complementary colors like red and green, which are color opposites. Having that contrast, we also have contrast of small and large. Having those differences really helps parts of our artwork to shine and pop. Let me pick a warmer, brighter orange. Variety of color makes me so happy. I hope you're having fun with this drawing. Uh, I mean, some of the drawings we create together are very difficult and require a lot of skill, whereas this kind of artwork, um, it still requires knowledge and skill, but you can loosen up a lot more and just have fun with it. There's a lot less room for mistakes. Oh, I forgot to color this uh, amoeba down here. I'll get him in a minute. Or her, or it. It's not really, there's no really he or her or she amoebas. It's just it's. They don't, they don't have a, uh, a boy or a girl status there. Yes, life can be strange. Creatures like humans and animals have males and females. But these single-celled organisms, amoebas, and those little, poor little paramecium getting eaten for lunch, there are no boys or girls. They just exist. It is a they. All right, let's see. Let me make you that color too. And looking at my art, I'm super happy with this. I have lots of emphasis on my amoebas because of that size of them and the contrast between this light, light mint green and this deep, cool purple. I've got lots of fun, organic shapes. I've got a lot going on. Uh, it's just fun to look at. It makes me happy. 
I learned something new. I hope you learned something new. And most of all, I hope you had fun. Thanks for drawing with me. I'll see you soon. Bye.